David, do you know what this is? I do know what this is. What, what this is, is it? Ham Ra- this is Ham Radio Now, the most important ham radio show on the internet. Come on, fly through. There you go. There's the fly through. Whoosh. Yeah. I made the whoosh sound. <laughs> Everybody hears it but you. So I know, I know. And me, I don't I don't hear it. You don't hear it either. All right, oh. here we go. One. And our title tonight. Episode, episode. three hundred and seventy nine. One ahead. league under the siege. You're totally uncoordinated. I am totally because I thought you were gonna do it and then I thought yeah. I was gonna do it and then I let you do it. One league under the siege. Do you you, you say you got that immediately, right? You got the reference. I got the reference. Yeah. So okay. I, I just I'll put you on the spot and have you explain it for those that are not getting it that are going, oh what? Then we'll yeah. find out if you really got it. <clears throat> I haven't told him. Well, there's so there's that one league under the sea thing, and uh I'm feeling like the league yeah. is under siege. Right. And well, so it's actually 20,000 we leagues under the sea. Right, right, right. That's the, yeah. yeah. That's there the go. reference. There we go. The literary okay. reference. I don't have to worry got, about getting a takedown for that because I'm not showing the the movie. I'm <laughs> just referring right. to it. And not even the real title. I didn't just get a takedown for the stuff that the we title. put in from Big Bang Theory and Star Trek. Excellent. I didn't get hit for that yet. Well, maybe they're watching us. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. I don't think so. uh, still haven't uh, updated that. You are I'm David Goldenberg. <laughs> I am David Goldenberg, W0DHG. Still very delayed through Skype. Sadly. Yeah, I think it's Wirecast. Could, you know, the next the next one we help. do, we'll try it without Wirecast and see what okay. happens. Well, but I'm going through Wirecast to you. Am I out of sync? Testing one, two, one, two. Can you, Peter Piper, pick a pick up, pick up peppers? A little bit. Okay. I'm Gary Pierce, KN4AQ, soon to be co-host, or ghost. And um, let's see, what's the next thing we do is uh, this thing. Yeah. Ham Radio so, Now is uh, brought to you by you and Arvin. And Arvin. Did you know so Arvin like, is the chief financial officer? Yes, he is. We, do we pay him salary? Uh, kibble, I believe. Excellent, excellent. Well, just, if you like what we're doing and you want to support us, please um, visit hamradionow.tv and look for Arvin and click the pig and help support us. And thank you so much to the people who continue to do that. Yep, absolutely. Every week. Pretty amazing. Absolutely. So before we get into the subject of this show, I, I want to um, relate a short story. I try to make it a short story. Um, this is my... Google Nexus 6P phone. It's a really darn good phone. It's coming up on two years old. And it started to suffer battery issues. Typical um, lithium-ion battery issues where it works until you give it a little bit of a extra current drain and then it kaboom, it's gone. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I had to get the battery replaced. And um, it, it was a little bit confusing because... It has a battery meter on it that tells, it tells you what the percentage of battery left is. But when the lithium-ion battery is is getting flaky, that really can't keep track. So it would say, oh, you got 50% left. Oh, you, no, you don't have anything left. I'm shutting down. Mm-hmm. So um, how old is it? Two years. It, it, five okay. Lithium-ion batteries are good for about 500 yeah. full yep. discharge cycles. And it's it was probably around there mm-hmm. in the almost two years, almost um, 700 days. Uh, so um, I took it to a local place called You Break I Fix. I would like oh, yeah, to say of, uh, that I did I've, not break it. <laughs> I yeah, didn't. I've, heard of, I've heard of those guys. They make cool toolkits. Uh, you may be thinking of I Fix It. No. Is it a different thing? This is a different thing. I Fix It is, is an online place. They yeah. have a store. You can buy lots of lots of tools from them. Yeah. You yeah. break I fix is a, a chain. They're all over the place. Mm-hmm. And this thing is sealed to within an inch of its life. And although I have taken phones apart before, I don't like to, you know, get the spudger in there and and you know try to just peel things apart that have been glued and never intended to be taken back apart again. But they're good at it. It costs yeah. it cost me about a hundred bucks to get the battery replaced, which is you know. It's painful, but this phone has got 
probably another two years of life in it again. And I'm, I'm not hearing impressive things about the replacement, the pixels. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. We'll see if that does the job. I, I'm in day one I'm and it's one. been on all day. Yeah. And it's about 40%. So, uh -huh. and I've been okay. using it a fair amount. So yeah, it's, it seems to be doing okay. But that's not the story I wanted to tell. I had to tell you that story so I could tell you so this story. So I tell you this story. <laughs> so, so, much, so much for being short. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, audience. No, it's good. It's good. So I uh, going about two hours with the phone in, in the shop. And mm -hmm. Cindy's going, I'm not going to be able to tell where you are. I'm not going to be able to find you on the... 360 and stuff and we can't coordinate for lunch and you know she's out running errands and i hand her a handy talkie on dmr local repeater on the local uh talk group and uh so we'll we'll use the ham radio she's katie for acw i keep threatening to have her license revoked for lack of use but mm -hmm. i haven't done that yet fortunately and so we actually had two contacts are you turning your brightness up and down? I'm trying to I'm trying to match you because I look terrible. I, you, I look like a ghost. Don't look bad to me. Okay. So uh, we actually had a couple of on the air contacts, and of course somebody has to break in and say, "Who are you?" Two of them. <clears throat> yeah. You wrote this down in your calendar, right? Uh, I, in the log. Yeah, I kept a log. I keep a scrupulous log. <laughs> nah. And how did those conversations go? Uh, Katie four ACW is KN four AQ. Can't break you, Katie, for ACW. Uh, I'm leaving the place. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm awesome. I'm arriving at lunch. Okay. <laughs> Katie, for ACW, she, clear. She cleared. Okay, great. Yeah, they were, as long they as were. she was all, as long as she was all legal and everything was good, you guys did it. Yeah, it's more than more than more than we get it in my house. I, I'll never get her on the air again. Never. Never. Well. No. Yeah. Next, next time. Next time, one of us is without a phone. phone. Yeah. Yeah, next time you lose your phone. Okay. So, um, well, and you, you guys go skiing. You guys use the phones. You guys use the radios then. We did. And uh, that was uh, the last time was um, about this time last year, sort of. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause the, in the, on the ski mountains, uh, first of all, the phones are inconvenient to use. And mm. you know, on a ski lift, you pick one up, you pull it out of your pocket, it's going to hit the snow 20 feet below you. Right. And nobody's jumping off that ski lift for it. Yeah. Not every lift ride up, but about every third lift ride up, there's somebody's phone down there or somebody searching for their phone. Where'd my phone go? That's pretty sad. It's near Tower 12. All right. Um, so on this uh, code of conduct thing. Um, so this is going to be getting to be a series with us. Yes. Well, I kind of expected it to be. Yeah, I did too. And there, there's been some progress. Um We've been through the, the Code of Conduct, which, of course, was initiated last January, about a year ago now, at the at the board meeting. And uh, and then there's the proposals for letting uh, officers vote and other changes to the articles of, I, I had been saying articles of incorporation, so had everybody else. It turns out it's the articles of association, just okay. to put a fine point on it. Right. Wouldn't be accurate. And the bylaws. Uh, a bunch of changes in there. Um, but, but most of what this program is going to be is that up until now, we've had very little feedback from officials at the league. And I sent email to my director and vice director, uh, the Roanoke division director, Dr. Jim Bonner, um, N2ZZ. And the vice director is uh, Bill Marine, uh, N2COP. And uh, why do we have two twos? This is four land. There's a little... Two land mafia down here running the ARL. What's going on? Mm -hmm. So, um, and they both responded. Uh, I know them pretty well. So, um, it elicited a response. A few other folks out there in Ham Radio Land, in Ham Radio Now Land, have also had responses from their directors. Uh, nobody willing to go on camera at this right. point. But the responses are on the record, and I can read them. And I've, I've shortened them to some extent, but not as much as I want. So this is going to be a lot of reading. Mm -hmm. So I guess I better get to it. I'm not going to put them on screen either, because um, they're not really formatted for, for reading on the screen. You're just going to going to hear me um, <laughs> hear me talk and read this and, and um, 
David, just jump in whenever something doesn't make sense or you want to comment. I don't have to go through yeah, absolutely. those. Absolutely. <clears throat> so this is from Dr. Jim Boner, um, N2ZZ. Jim's been on the ham, ham radio. He's been on the ham radio now show before. He's been here before. Um, I can only speak for the Roanoke Division and my personal impression of what is going on. Um, from many of the emails he's received, and he's gotten a lot, his impression is that answers are not being sought. So I don't know what you guys are sending to our directors out there, but apparently you're sounding pretty darn mean. And that was never our intent, right? Right. Oh, you know, so I guess I can comment a little bit on this. What I have seen, you know, there's a big movement afoot in, um, on, um, Facebook, the, um, you know, I was going to have that up and open here. There's a new group they started just two or three days ago. And, uh, the, we're going to, my ARL voice, we'll, we'll get yeah, to that. The, my, yeah. A lot of the responses there, I think kind of talk to this where answers aren't being sought. There's a lot of, we would like to see these things happen. Yeah. And I wonder if that's not what Jim's talking about. Maybe, you know, maybe, um, demanding rather than, um, yeah. Well, he, he goes on to say, you know, my impression is answers are not being sought. Rather, it is anger with demands that the ARL reverse a number of actions that have been done. And for the latter, no explanation will be satisfactory. And I want to read this as straight as I can. I don't want to, you know, put a, a spin on it. Uh, this is what Jim told us. And, and you know, it's be most, le most legitimate to just <clears throat> um, read it the way he, he said it. Yep. He's also worried that his context could be taken out of context and used against him or the ARL. Uh, and it is perhaps that and the fact that we live in a litigious society uh, as to why the league has been so silent on matters that have recently been circulating on the Internet. So, and, you know, things have been pretty, pretty quiet. Um, okay. Yep. And that's, that's why I wanted to read his responses. And it's, it's you know, he was, he was pretty thorough. Uh, he's uh, gave me a little bit of his background to, to relay to everybody. He's been a, a section manager for seven years, a vice director for five years, three, three years as a director. Um, he is a physician and he has served over 20 years as board, as a board member on other nonprofits and for-profit uh, board of directors. Since the ARL is a representative democracy, I answer to the members of my division. I realize I'm switching back and forth between first and third person here. I guess I'll read him in the first person the way he wrote it. Mm -hmm. uh, I must respect confidentiality and can disclose only certain information while others are able to say whatever they want, whenever they want, whether true or not. It is a particularly difficult position to be in when you know you did the right thing, but are criticized without the ability to defend yourself. <clears throat> and that's, that's been... One of the things about this is that, you know, us pundits mm -hmm. here on TV yep. have, have said pretty much our piece. I think we're being, we're, we're being fair, but we're also saying we don't understand what's going on. We'd like someone to explain it and, that, and have not been getting much in the way of explanations. Uh, and, and Jim is saying, um, well, the, everybody can say what they want except us because we're not allowed to, that's, and that's kind of been the point. That, yeah, that's the heart of my problem right there. Because because if 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 you go back a bullet or two, and he answers to the members of his division, which would be you, not me. He's not answering to you. Well, uh, he is. I mean, he, it's, it, he is, and he and, is. And, and, and as he, he says, it's it's not the answer is not satisfactory. Which yeah. which is you can read that a couple of ways. Um, if it's if if it's somebody who's just spouting red faced anger. Well, you're never going to make those guys happy. Oof, if it's, course. if it's me, who's not doing that, but has serious questions that I, I'm pretty sure I'm right about. Yeah. What are you saying? Well, let's, let's see what he's saying and we'll, we'll see what I can okay. agree with and what I don't. Um, regarding the charges, uh, changes to the articles of association and the bylaws in general. Um, the proposals for changing the articles and bylaws were proposed by the ARRL's executive committee, which has been studying the article and bylaw changes for the past year. 
Uh, they were not proposed by the Delta Division Director, David Norris, uh, K5UZ, uh, as an individual. Um, and that's something that we were kind of wondering about. In fact, I had not prepared myself to say who those changes were being proposed by, but it turns out that some of these were um, brought to the board by uh, David Norris, K5UZ, uh, Delta Division Director, but um, they just have to be proposed by someone. Mm -hmm. But they were prepared by the executive committee, which is a subset of the board. Uh, the process of terminating an individual ARL's mem uh, member's membership, <coughs> I butchered that, sorry, um, was one of the things that was recommended by the a Connecticut Council for the ARL. Because though the board has always had the authority that's the authority to terminate a membership. The process for doing so had not been enunciated. And, um, and that's found in Article 11 of the Articles of Association. Um, the vast majority of the articles and bylaw changes now being proposed were first vetted to the board members last July. So they, we just found out about them, hmm, what, in late December. December. But they've been yeah. around since July, at least some mm -hmm. of them. Of course, you know, leading us to wonder why haven't we heard about them earlier? Right. Was it what were they published? Were they not published? Yeah. And I guess that they weren't, or if they were, we missed them. I think if they were, we'd have found them. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I didn't catch on to the, yeah, to the changes or to the code of conduct um, mm -hmm. until like June when they came out in January. There is a short, another short story <clears throat> that um, I keep intending to, to relate in the, and I keep forgetting. I, when I was down at the Orlando Hamcation and I was doing the story on the uh, petition to recall Greg Surratt, and mm -hmm. that was part of Doug Raymond's um, disqualification to run again as the Southeastern Division Director. So there was a petition out there to, to uh, recall Greg Surratt, who was, declared elected when the elections committee said, mm, let's see, we've got Doug Raymond. We got Greg Surratt on the ballot. We are disqualifying Doug Raymond. There's only one person left on the ballot. And when we do that. We don't have an election. We just declare the one available candidate elected. So they did. Um, <clears throat> so I was down there uh, getting that story together. And I went over to the ARL booth and Greg was there and Bob Interbitson was there. And I asked them if they would like to come on the show and talk about it. And they said no. And, and Bob said something that I am not clear in my mind as to the language that he used. I'll tell you what I remember, and I'll tell you that I can't, I can't say that this is exactly what he said. But he was saying something about uh, board of directors all need to be in lockstep with the policies of the, of the directors or of the board. I don't know if he used the word lockstep, but I think he did. And even if he didn't, the concept was still there. The, the idea is that everybody is, be on board. Mm -hmm. And uh, that struck me as odd. And it wasn't until I learned about the code of conduct that I said, oh, that's what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. That's what he means. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's it just, you know, as, as someone who likes to think for myself and doesn't like to be told what to think and also doesn't like to be told to go along or to get along. That rubbed me very much the wrong way as right. this whole thing seems to be rubbing me very much the wrong way. Uh, I, I don't like the idea of what the code of conduct is requiring people to do. And I don't like the idea that the answer to the, to um, directors who don't feel the ability to get on board is quit. I don't like that. Right. We're going to see or, a bit more of that here in a second. Or, or be censured or, or whatever. But yeah, let's keep going because yeah. we'll touch on this a little bit more. Yeah. All right. Um, so um, let's see. So we were talking about th they had brought things up last July, including mm -hmm. the idea of um, terminating a member, which yep. I guess the big point here is that, that um, the Articles of uh, Association – Give the board the power to do that. This is not something they are invented, inventing at this point. It is just something they are clarifying what the process would be. 
and and still not very clear, but right, but a little bit it's more. Now, now it's written down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, this is incidentally the first time in the history of the ARL that proposed article and bylaw changes, which have to be circulated prior to a board meeting in order to avoid a super majority vote per existing articles. It's the first time they have been aired out to the membership in advance of the opportunity of the board to consider them collegially among themselves. So first time they've been sent out before the board has had a chance to talk about them. One might question the motivations and the wisdom of the director who felt it necessary to circulate the proposed changes before his colleagues have had the chance to discuss them among themselves. And I think you wanted to say something about that because I got a note from you here. Yeah, yeah, and 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 um, <laughs> when I when I read this, I thought to myself, uh, yeah, or maybe want to salute that person for actually sending it out so other people can see it, so we can reach out to our directors and say, uh, what are you doing? Why do you think this way? What is it? What are where are we going? Yeah, and and if if I had Jim on the show right now. The question that I would ask at this point is, well, explain to me what the procedure would be right. when this is brought up and in discussed among the board members at a, at a board of directors meeting, is it then going, are you going to vote on it at this meeting or it, does it then get refined, improved, you guys get your input and then, and then put something a more final package together and then send it out to the members and it won't get voted on until the summer board meeting. But he's not here for me to ask that. So in the email exchange back and forth takes too long. So I don't right. know. I don't know if that's the idea. If the idea is, well, we're, we're going to, we will, we will fine tune it because there's some things in there that we don't like. And we will come up with something that the board can agree on and then send it out get feedback from the members, fine tune it some more, and then vote on it in July. That would be, I'm going to say that would be fine. Somebody's going to point out the error of my ways, but I'm going to say that would be fine. And I just don't know. Don't know if that's yeah, what's they, going to happen. Yeah. Have, have you seen that happen before? Another thing that I have admitted to is that I have not been one of those folks that picks the board, board of directors minutes apart. Yeah. Piece by piece. I don't even read them. I never have. Yeah. And unless I just somebody calls my them. attention, unless somebody calls my attention to them, um, mm -hmm. to something <laughs> like happened with the code of conduct. I mean, I right. Didn't, wasn't aware of it. Most of us are not. Most of us have pretty much sat back and said, and the league can take care of things. Mm -hmm. And once in a while, some big thing comes up, like let's eliminate the Morse code requirement or change the band plan or something. And, and the membership gets aware of it and, and gives them a lot of feedback. And once in a while, they even say, uh, tell us what you think. But a lot of things go by without, without much comment. A lot of things I'd, are areas that I don't care very much about. So I don't you know, get all worked up, but other people do like changing rules of contests and, mm -hmm. you know, DXCC and things like that. People can get really, uh, get really worked up about that. So yeah, if, um, if there's a if there's a director that le that leaked this out and it's our only chance to really see it in advance well then yes good on him otherwise that, that would well that would be my take but i yeah. but apparently maybe um maybe not everybody feels that way yeah and i get you know otherwise what still what's the big problem so we see it something in an earlier stage yeah. with our with our us congress we see every stage from the initial bill proposal through all of the committees and every step until it's done. Now we don't see all the back room, you know, smoke filled room right. negotiating, but we see every, every stage of the bill. Mm -hmm. I keep thinking that, you know, as a representative organization where we vote for people, um, it should be more like, God help us should be more like Congress. <coughs> and, and as I say that, I realize how bad that sounds. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I I guess that's that's closer to than the you know the other the other metaphor that was used was you know the NSA. It's a lot more like the NSA right now, based on what's happening. I'd like it to be more like 
Congress, although there's parts of the stuff going on in Congress I don't like either. Yeah. But we should NSA or we should NRA? NRA? Either, either one of those kind <laughs> of organizations. Yeah, and, and, well, you know, um, it seems more like a secret thing that's going on here. That's okay, why so that would be NSA. NSA yeah. yeah, that's why I said yeah. NSA. And NRA, that's a whole different, I mean, <laughs> that's, a, that's a different membership organization that works in a different way. Yeah. All right. Uh, no comment one way or the other on them. But yeah. Okay, so back to the comments, back to me from uh, Dr. Jim Boner. Um, yep. About the officers voting, that's a proposal that was done by uh, Mike Lysenko. And mm-hmm. uh, you'll, he says, you will have to ask Mr. Lysenko about this proposal. It has not been discussed by the board collectively. I personally am not convinced of the necessity of such a proposal. At this time, my inclination would be not to support the proposal as the ARL is a representative democracy. However, that being said, I would not want to prejudge the proposal that Mike may bring to the board or any argument he, want, he, may, he might make about it. So... Okay. He's in the same boat as the rest of us. He's heard, Wait. he's read what um, what Michael Senko has proposed, and his initial reaction is, in having the president and the three vice presidents being able to vote on the board, doesn't like that idea. But right, he said, but you know, maybe he can be convinced, and maybe we could be, if we hear about it. Right. Well, we need to we need to know about it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, Regarding provisions of the code of conduct that was enacted last January, that uh, no, you skip, you skipped a section. Did I skip something? Yeah, reg- oh. regarding the disqualification of. Oh. Uh, oh, I did. Yeah. Okay. okay. Regarding disqualification of um, Bob Famiglio, K3RF, from the Atlantic Division Directors election. Now, Bob was the vice director of the Atlantic Division, and uh, <clears throat> and he wanted to run for director. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was disqualified by the Ethics and Elections Committee. They said that he had a conflict of interest and they would not tell him what it was. At least that's what he tells everybody. Mm-hmm. So uh, um, Jim says the decision with respect to the Atlantic Division election candidacy, with how that was handled, as are all election candidate actions, um, was based on a decision by the ARRL's Ethics and Elections Committee and affirmed by the Board of Directors. They found only one qualified candidate for director, and that is the extent of the information that can be released. And of course, that doesn't sit well with anybody. Yeah, that's a problem for me. So that means that there's other information there that they can't release, and why can't they release it? And again, back to back to you. You know, um, this is your representative, and your representative should be able to tell you stuff. Yeah. Um, and they should be able to tell Bob stuff, and they wouldn't tell well, him. Well, yeah, if they, if, yeah if they, right, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, their reasons may be very legitimate, but they could also be hiding something corrupt. And when you get to the, a situation like that, then the optics are bad, and the situation can be bad, and we have no way of knowing. Yeah, it's yeah. a trust me thing, and I don't like trust me. Well, and, and that's the thing, you know, and, and if you if you think about things like that logically, if there's a legitimate reason why K3RF was disqualified, all they need to do to shut us up is just say, he did X, Y, Z, and therefore he's not on the ballot. Yeah. The conflict of interest thing is is not necessarily a he did. It's just um, he... They're, they have a, a list yeah, of things sure. that, that can be a conflict of interest. And they specifically say that it doesn't necessarily mean you've done anything wrong. It's just right. it's, you've got interests that would be in conflict with your your service on the board. Um, one of the things that Bob had mentioned in, in a pretty extensive write-up about what went on, um, on that was on the Atlantic Division website, I think it maybe still be there, is that he's in no different consi- uh, situation than he was when he ran as vice director. And, and was elected as vice director. He says nothing's changed. So if right. he didn't have a conflict, then he shouldn't have one now. Right. Uh, and we, so, and we sort of worry that these things get used to uh, keep people off the board that mm-hmm. the majority of the board don't want there. That's right. the, that's the corrupt part that we worry about. Right. And that and rolls the, back to why are we, why are we giving them four more votes? Yeah. And there's, there's lots of folks out there that, 
are are happy to just you know raise uh, shout and raise their fist and say that th- that is the corruption that is happening. We don't know, right? Right. Have, haven't been there. Okay. Uh, okay. So now um, the provisions of the code of conduct uh, enacted last January that limit a director's ability to speak freely about issues once they have been voted by the board. And this is my language. <clears throat> this is what I asked about. And I said, what about provisions that limit a director's ability to speak freely? And the first thing that Jim said was, this is a completely false characterization of the code of conduct. Yeah, I, that I got limit, a problem with that. It limits a director's ability to speak freely. Um, you your, your problem. <laughs> I got, I, if you go back through the comments that he's already said, there's stuff he says he can't discuss with us. Yeah. So uh, he's he's obviously you know, either he's self limiting, or there are other reasons why he can't say things. I mean, he almost every one of the last you know bullet items we've talked about, um, there has been you know the extent of the information that can be released you know regarding Bob Flamingo, Flamingo, um and so on and so forth up the list. Yep, he cat claws in me again. Um, and I had thought it has escaped to my brain. So I'll move on. Um, okay. he, he gave me a longer discussion about how the code of conduct is, it's routine. It's good governance. All nonprofit organizations uh, should have one. The league was mm-hmm. late in developing one and it was recommended by our longtime corporate attorneys in Connecticut. And a lot of this has come up based on um, leagues and you know, board of directors discussions with, um, with that attorneys group. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently they had a big come to Jesus meeting about how they needed to make some changes. And so here they come. Mm-hmm. So this is back to Jim speaking. <clears throat> it is not the proper role of individual directors to speak for the organization or to publicly evaluate the wisdom of the collective decisions of the board. So individual directors shouldn't publicly say what they think. Individual directors can and do regularly discuss policy issues affecting radio amateurs with members of their own divisions and with each other. They are obligated to keep in touch with members and to ascertain their needs and to represent those interests diligently. They do that all the time. Nothing has changed in that respect since the code of conduct was adopted. The board is well informed by staff and professionals that are retained to provide briefings to them, but the deliberations are collegial and some are of necessity confidential. And now I think I remember what I was going to say. And that is a lot of people when they are talking about the limitations on the board, not being able to talk to us, speak about that too broadly. They say the board is not allowed to talk to us. And that is not true. The cat's going to be climbing the chair behind me now. They can talk to us a lot. For example, Jim said, or will say, I think um, about well about the uh, the the president and vice president's voting. The, the board hasn't decided on that, so Jim could give us his opinion on that. And his opinion was didn't think maybe it was a good idea, but he wants to hear from the guy who is proposing it first. Mm-hmm. He can talk to us about that. The only time they can't is once the board has already voted on something and it's a, a done deal. And as far as the league is concerned, it's a done deal. And they would like it to be a done deal, period. End of discussion. Mm-hmm. We members, of course, we are free to discuss it all we want. As, for example, we are discussing this code of conduct. Right. Ad nauseum. <laughs> Well, I, and you know, and I and I want to, you know, based on the the last bullet point, I, I want to separate the two things. I don't think there's a problem with having a code of conduct, right? And I think we need to be clear about that, right? Uh, you know, every sure. organization has a, you know, you 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 can't take bribes, you can't, you know, favor this vendor, you have to do this, you have to do that. There's nothing wrong with that at all, and and I don't think that that we need to be clear. That's not what we're saying. It is parts of what's being introduced into that code of conduct like this issue that we're talking about. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, a couple of shows ago, I scrolled through the whole thing. Right. And I had highlighted the parts that gave me a problem and uh, maybe a third of it or a quarter of it was highlighted a lot, mm-hmm. but not anywhere near not at all. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. There are a lot of things in there that if they felt they needed those things, 
I didn't see a problem with them. But that doesn't mean somebody else out there would not would see a problem or wouldn't see a problem. We sure. all get our own opinions. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, back to what Jim was telling me. So please do not allow the false characterizations that have been made about the code of conduct to continue. Well, we're going to have a problem with that because we don't think the characterizations are false, except for the right. folks that went too broadly and said, they can't talk to us at all. We've right. been real clear for a couple of shows. It mm -hmm. is after a vote. That's the mm -hmm. deal. Um, the code of conduct is here to stay. However, I am part of a group that will propose a few revisions to the document at the January board meeting, including the right of a director to discuss their individual vote with their division members. Can we say that again? Jim is going to be part of a group that is going to do some revising. And, and I've seen other statements that say that although the code of conduct was voted in, it also mm -hmm. can be changed. It yep. wasn't carved in granite. So he's going to be part of a group that will propose some revisions this January. And one of them will be the right of directors to talk about their individual vote with their division members. And, it, you know, that's essentially the public. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like division members. This is a secret. Don't let anybody know what I'm well, telling you. Right. Everybody's, everybody's, you know, has a di division um, representative to represent them and they can yeah. talk to us individually. Now, you know, maybe the way it's written, Jim can't come and talk to me about it. Oh, I, I don't think that's Dick be. Norton. That's Dick Norton's responsibility. Well, I mean, yeah. it, it depends on how you, you know, slice the hairs here. But one, you know, one of the things when I read this, that, that, you know, here's the meat, right? They're, they're, trying to make the changes. What are the changes that they're trying to make? Yeah. And, yep. and will they, will we get to learn what they are? Cause, cause well, yep. let's, uh, it doesn't appear to be the case. Part of a group that will propose revisions right. at the January board meeting. It doesn't say they're going to vote on them. Right. They're just proposing them and maybe, yeah. and maybe it'll get entered in the minutes and they'll vote on them later yeah. on. It's, it's hard to know the way that they're going to handle that. And, and maybe we should all be paying more attention, but we're not. I've surveyed all of the other ham radio podcasts, audio and video shows. We're the only ones talking about it. Yeah. Ham nice well, nation's yeah. building pine board. Um, everybody else is you know doing their thing, but we're the only show that's talking about this. And, and CQ and KB6NU's blog and a new website we'll, that we'll, we've referred to, but we'll talk about it in a minute. I, I'm, I'm trying to collect lumps of coal to heat my house next summer, winter. Because <laughs> that's all that's going to be in your stocking? <laughs> that's kind of what I think. Regarding the uh, censure of Pacific Division Director Dick Norton and 6AA. You got it right that time. <laughs> when, I, when I wrote to Jim, I... I called him Dick Abernathy. And uh, I'm not sure it's Dick Abernathy, but he is the current division director for the Atlantic Division. I think that's Doug. Doug, okay. In any case, um, yep. uh, this um, Jim sent a letter to the CDXA, that's the Carolina DX Association. <clears throat> and they're kind of based in Charlotte. Uh, he put it on their reflector a few days ago, and this is what he said. As a director, I am restricted as to what I can disclose. Wait, wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. Red alert. Wait a second. Let's go. Let's go back about fifteen minutes. Yeah, I know. Didn't he say he wasn't restricted by what he could say? Well, okay, he didn't say that. He just said that a a characterization of the um, right. code of conduct as something that limits what a director can say is a uh, mischaracterization. Okay, I'll so go. maybe actually maybe there's something outside of the code of conduct that limits what he can say. Reading between the lines here. All right. There, sorry, there, in fact, there is. There is also an yeah. NDA. Yeah, right. As a director, I am restricted as to what I can disclose. The individuals who are not subjected subject to that uh, privacy can say whatever they want, whenever they want. One side of the story is being told. Okay, this stuff in red, this is yours, right? Yeah, just jump through. Yeah, jump okay. through that. We'll get to it. Um, those of us on the board are being criticized for sticking our necks out to do what, in our opinion, was the right thing to do, despite the widespread criticism we knew would result. And it did. Unfortunately, many are buying it. Those who have the responsibility of making the tough decisions are not being supported. I would hope that those of uh, those of, um, I would hope that those 
who know me trust that I have the best possible intentions for the ARL, its membership, and what the ARL stands for. It is not the first time I've been put in this situation. It is painful, but a necessary place to be. Again, this is still Jim, um, Jim, Dr. Jim Boner, uh, my division director in the Roanoke division. I understand certain amateur radio groups have examined the evidence, and we're, we're talking about Dick Norton's censure, mm-hmm. have examined the evidence and do not agree with the board's findings. Not to be critical, but a board's decision to sanction one of its own is the responsibility of the board and the board alone. In medicine, we do this all the time. It's called peer review. I have served on numerous peer review committees, as well as being a department chairman. I have been faced with sanctioning by my peers, both for medical and behavioral reasons. It is better for us to solve our problems internally, rather than to have a regulatory body do it for us. In closing, I do always mentally put myself in the position of the aggrieved and wonder what I would do if I was in their shoes. Speaking for myself alone, I know that I would be upset, I would consider resigning from the board, and perhaps even drop out of amateur radio for a while. What I know that I would never do is allow anyone to attack the ARL on behalf, on my behalf in any way, risking membership, donors, and faith in the organization. I would quietly step aside. The ARL and its membership are, a much, are much larger than any of us and must survive to protect the future of amateur radio. We live in a time where spectrum auctions are commonplace. We have valuable spectrum that has been largely untouched. What we all, Uh, What has always impressed me is how quickly the ARL has jumped on any threat to our spectrum from any service that threatens it. To allow actions that would weaken the ARL in any way would threaten the ability to continue that spectrum protection. If we lost our spectrum, well, then we wouldn't have much more to talk about. I did speak with our ARL president, uh, Rick uh, K5UR, a few days ago. He will be making sure that our new ARL communications manager, Dave Isker, will be pushing out details of the January board meeting to our membership, detailing board actions and reasons behind them. Okay, so that was a, uh, an email that he sent to the CDXA. So apparently the CDXA had contacted him with concerns similar to everything we've been talking about here. Right. And they're a, you know, a, a prominent prestigious uh, DX organization. Mm-hmm. So you had some red in there. That's your comments. Yeah. So I just had some comments, you know, um, you know, in the start of this, when they, when um, he started to talk about the, you know, again, back to being restricted about what he could disclose and, and that only one side of the story is being told, you know, I, I've talked with individuals that were in the room and um, that have made statements um about what was said and um, nobody understands this. Um, there isn't the other side being told. Um, I, I did hear from somebody today um, that um, there's awareness. It's not an anonymous. There is a person behind it, but the, whatever the person said, whatever they reported, there's nothing there. Nobody's sharing it. Nobody's talking about it. I cannot. And, and apparently nobody can understand what it might be. Yeah, and that's the thing. I cannot fathom what it might be that one would have caused uh, Dick to be censured. Two, that was so terrible that they won't share it with us. And and three, why with all this shining light on it? And it's just more. It's more than just you and me. You know, um, Dan's Dan's talking about it. Other people are talking about it. Uh, there's the whole my ARL voice that's now talking about it. There's letters from all sorts of radio clubs and individuals and life members talking about it. I'd like to think um, that that all happened because of our shows, but that's probably not true. Oh, it's totally but true. It's also Dan and it's, Dan's blog and CQ. Well, we started it all. <laughs> yeah, no. I, uh, yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> yeah. All right. We, we, we are, however, and the he, most important amateur radio program on the We internet. are, we are. You know, I I like to think of it as a group effort. We yeah. we've all we've all been 
poking in this fire. In, in this case, um, at least uh, on those folks over at the My ARL Voice, we're we're getting our credit right up with everybody else. So. Yeah, yeah, we're we'll yeah, they they did they did shout out and, and point out to a couple of, of our episodes. Um, but I, I, you know, I I can't understand. What's the other side? Tell us the other side. Right. Just and, and there have been put it out there. There have been um, some very well known and prestigious voices comment who were there at the room. You know, K three LR was is the one I can think of right now. Yeah, who wrote public descriptions of what went on and said we don't know what the problem was. Yeah, K six FG. Uh, you know, my friend Mark Weiss, who who I believe and maybe even Mark believes that the stuff that dick got attributed for was the stuff that came out of mark's mouth um it was there in the room and had talked about it and was critical and he's like a retired you know u.s superior court judge i trust this guy this guy is not well no wait do you trust him or was he a judge yes (laughs) yes okay um i want to cause trouble uh, no that's okay um it doesn't make sense none of this adds up you know, there, there's something else, well, and it's stuff that it, it's stuff they don't want us to know. And it adds the, up. It just adds up to some place we don't want it to add up to. Right. Okay. Yeah. It does. It adds up to. Yeah. Yep. That, All that, right. Move, that's moving that, along, it, as they would say on South Park, shenanigans. I right. call shenanigans. <laughs> All right. So Bill wraps up, or rather, Jim wraps up uh, with a note about appearing on the show. Uh, it's not appropriate for me or Bill to be on the show at this time. These topics go way beyond the scope of my authority as a director of the Roanoke Division. Mm-hmm. I would check with our leadership, which we have, and they won't come on either, uh, right. which I feel would be much more appropriate in, you know, 73, Jim N2ZZ, director of the Roanoke Division. I, I appreciate it, the it's comments. way sounds like the directors have been cowed. Yeah. Wait a minute. There's president, some vice presidents, and the directors. You guys are right up there next to the top. You are the folks that we have elected. Mm-hmm. You should be able to to be right out front with what you think and what you want done and talking to us and being on all the shows over and over again. Yeah. They're the ones with the votes. In fact, yeah. they're the ones that can vote in the folks above them. Yep. And I know Except, this, 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 you know, this television show stuff, this media, it's, you know, for as far as hams are concerned, it was invented a couple of weeks ago. It's kind of new. We're not sure what to do with it yet. Yeah. But uh, come on, look at CNN, MSNBC, Fox News. They'll show you how this is done. It okay. ain't pretty. You know, but we, you see all the sausage getting made, mm-hmm. but that's where it happens these days. It's instantaneous. It's not magazine publishing dates away so that you got a while to get this figured out. It happens now. And yeah. when it doesn't happen now, then you get this. You get people like us sitting here talking about it on one side and they go beyond the scope of authority to speak as a director or okay. so they're been told to think. And then and all we keep hearing is we're only hearing one side. We're only hearing one side. And yep. you know what? We only keep asking about what's the other side. And it would yeah. be really easy. It'd be really easy to be done with this. Just tell us. So a shorter note from my friend Bill, uh, Bill Marine and 2COP, who's the vice director. Um, and regarding the Norton Center, like Jim, I so wish the handcuffs could be taken off and the other side of the story revealed. Oh, what? Bill, do we wish that could happen too? What? And we don't understand why it can't be. Yeah. However, leading up to the board meeting in two weeks, um, there is an orchestrated campaign among contesting clubs asking board members to overturn Director Norton's censure. Jim and I are getting the brunt of this one-sided campaign, uh, for which you so aptly pointed out in my email to him that we are screwed because they can't talk about it. There is no defense we can mount under the current code of conduct. All we can say is the majority of directors voted as they saw fit with the evidence, although I was not part of the vote as a vice director. I believe the overwhelming number of directors have the conscience and integrity to make the right decision, and regrettably, they cannot explain their side. For the time being, we must live with that. No. Bill, you are a very good friend of mine, and I hope our friendship continues for as long as we both may live. And I can't accept that. I don't, can you accept that? No. 
Bill's are, Bill, I'm not already on Bill's good side, but yeah. I, I can't accept it. No. And, and, and I, and you know, and I, and I feel bad for Bill because. And all the directors. Uh, yeah. All the directors who really want to talk. And are afraid that they, that they, and, and want to continue to serve in their position and are afraid if they do talk, that they will get censured and at the next election, they will be disqualified. And, and why would, why would they want to be party to the, um, the changes that they're going to propose this month to even, you know, further thin out their vote? Yeah. Doesn't make sense. My exchange with Jim went back and forth another a little bit. I spent a lot of time writing. Poor guy had to spend a lot of time reading. With Bill uh, or with Jim? With um, well, both. Uh, I included okay. both of oh, them sorry. in there. Yeah. And um, you know, these are volunteer positions. They're not supposed to be full time. They're not supposed mm-hmm. to be something that, that you know that, that they have to spend their life doing, especially getting attacked. And uh, they're getting pretty overwhelmed. Um, I, I have sympathy for that. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm not I'm not helping at all. Yeah. Uh, and it could cause directors who um, are uh, you know, otherwise conscientious, good directors that have every uh, good wish for ham radio uh, in, the, in the league, uh, in their hearts, to say, this is too much. I'm not going to do it anymore. And that leads to another question I don't want to get into with a lot of depth right now, um, but something that's going to be have to face up to as the elections come up this summer and that is, um, well, if, if we need to replace directors with people who will open the ARL up, who do we find? Who are these people? And yeah. are they competent to do the whole job and not just go in and say, I'm cleaning house? You know, that's, that is not going to be easy. Right. Absolutely. It's not like people are in most cases are, are scrambling for these positions. We're not, they're not, we're, we're not fighting them off uh, or we're not seeing ballots come down with six or eight people on them. Um, often it's some arm twisting. <clears throat> There's something else about the director's um, elections that we can also mention at this point. Uh, and is brought up in CQ's white paper. And that is uh, uh, at least according to CQ's white paper. And I haven't done the, the math myself the current majority of the board of directors was never elected. Hmm. They were appointed as a replacement when a director um, resigned. And that is a pretty typical thing to see happen is that before a director leaves office, they will resign before the election and their vice director is promoted to the office. Uh, and that is a, a pretty deliberate technique to, to maintain the consistency of the people that are there on the board. Now the director will face, um, the vice director promoted to director will still face an election, the next election cycle. Um, but they'll face it as the incumbent, which gives them some advantage. Mm-hmm. Not, it's not a shoe in. Right. Uh, incumbents have been defeated, but it's it's a it, it is an advantage. Um, and I think that something else that that um, um, CQ was referring to is the idea that it, that when there's only one person on the ballot, that person is declared elected. There was never a vote, mm-hmm. so there's a lot of people that are there in that situation, and a few of them because someone was denied. Uh, a position on the ballot because they were they were disqualified, and so that's the that's the case um, with Greg Surratt in the southeastern division when Doug Raymond was disqualified. That's the case in the Atlantic division with Abernathy when Bob Flamigli, Flamiglio was disqualified. So you know, were they elected? Were they declared elected? Were they appointed? Well, they weren't elected by a vote of the membership because. They were the only candidate. And in those cases, anyway, there was another opposing candidate who was declared um, disqualified, and we don't get to hear very much about that. It's all very secret. Right. And, and, you know, in Bob's case, as well as I think one of the other cases as well, the the candidate, their comment is, 
I don't know why I was disqualified. And I didn't really get a acceptable answer as to why I was just out. Yeah. And that's a problem. Okay. Bill said a couple more things to me. Um, he he yep. reiterated um, that it's a general best practice recommended yeah, again, by their of, councils. Nothing wrong with code of conduct. Yep. Um, and he expects there'll be a discussion about the amendments and mm -hmm. for the officers voting. Um, he said that because these proposals are ahead of a vote, it's an open platform to, for mm -hmm. debate. I agree with Jim at this juncture. I don't see any reason to support the measure. This is an area where members not only should be expressing their opinion to us, but we can respond freely. So they, they both said that, that it doesn't sound like something that they would support. It didn't go into depth. And, you know, mm -hmm. they were here on the, on the show, we could talk about, well, why is this being proposed? Is it stacking the deck? Are, are we afraid that rogue candidates are going to be elected and we are going to have to keep them in the minority, having four more votes that are reliable? I mean, that's, right. the, that's the corruption side of the argument. What's the other side? Mm -hmm. Well, as Jim points out, it's being proposed by uh, Mike Lysenko and um, we haven't heard his his comment yet. Right. So we will see. And they'll, they'll hear it. They'll hear it at the meeting and then I guess they'll vote on it or they won't. And then the question is, is there enough, are there enough other voices in the room? If it doesn't make sense to support Jim, cause Bob, uh, Bill can't vote right. as a, as a vice director, but if yeah. there's enough other voices in the room with Jim and, and um, hopefully Dick Norton and some of the others to say, no, we don't agree that this is the way it should go. Yeah, well, uh, we'll see some of those names appear in this uh, in this new group. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, I put a note on the Ham Radio Now Facebook group um, asking if anybody else has contacted their director. We didn't get a flood of comments, but I got a couple. Greg Either Williams, couple. Greg Williams um, got a uh, he wrote to his director, Greg Surratt, W four O Z K, uh, urging him to modify the uh, the uh, code to allow for free discussion with members and to revoke the censure from N6AA. Mm -hmm. And Greg's response was, thank you for your comments on the subject. Right. And that's just all a total, Yeah. Just a total blow off. Well, yeah, that's what know, it Greg is. Greg didn't really ask him a question to get a response. Okay. <clears throat> he said, this is what I want. Right. He didn't say, and, what What do you think or why isn't it or, you know, whatever. It was just, here's what I want. And and that may have been what, what Jim was talking about early, early on in his, his letter, basically saying answers aren't being sought. Yeah. You know, that they're just making demands. Yeah. Okay. Which is fine. Okay. It, it, a, a demand is fine. Mm -hmm. An angry demand, it's a free country. You're, mm -hmm. But, you know, you're going to catch more flies with sugar. Right. Um, Russell uh, Wilson got a response from the uh, his division director, Dale Williams, uh, WA8EFK. Um, and uh, Dale said that the, many of the changes to the bylaws and articles of association are being suggested by the legal team. He also said the, and, and I asked, uh, Russell didn't want to quote the director directly. So I said, well, just give me a summary. So this is, this is Russell's summary. Um, the changes were suggested by the legal team. Um, and the code of conduct does not prohibit directors from expressing their opinions, but that they should not condemn or be critical of decisions once they are made by the board. And that is all true. They, yeah. they are not, they are not prohibited from talking about things before and, and afterwards they cannot condemn or be critical of decisions once they've been made. And that is what we are saying is not good enough. And you know, I can understand why, the league would not want directors to be bad mouthing decisions that have already been made. I can understand why. And, um, cause keeps arguments going, makes people mad. Mm -hmm. Um, my response is put on your big boy pants and suck it up. Cause well, that I, is debate in America. Well, I mean, and that's the thing. This is a representative organization. Someone asked you and me and all the rest of the other members to select a representative, our director, to go and sit at the board meetings and represent your interests and my interests, whether they're the same or different. And um, my hope would be if I took the time to put a, you know, a stamp on an envelope and mail the thing in to support my director that 
I'd have the ability to get feedback to and from my director, you know, based on, you know, what, what my desires are and what they think and what kind of conversations they have as, as the board, uh, whether my director agrees or not. And maybe, you know, it's bad on us because we're not paying enough attention to these things as they come along. Um, the league may be publishing more than I'm aware of, more than you're aware of, in advance of, of voting on things. I never heard anything about the code of conduct before it came up. Was it, was it made public before the January board meeting or just after the vote? If it was only made public after the vote, well, then everything that they're saying is, you know, is worthless because we were not given an opportunity to weigh in. Mm-hmm. And if I had caught wind of this before it came up, you know, if it had been, it had been sitting there on the league's website saying, here's something that we're talking about doing, what do you think? Well, mm-hmm. they would have had a boatload of what I think. And right. if I missed that, then shame on me. And if I was not given the opportunity to get it, then shame on you. And I don't know. I don't know. I I should go back and and look and see where that might have been publicized. You'd think maybe your director might have pointed out that it was here or there. And maybe not. And do I read the director's um, bulletin religiously? No. No. But I do. I do. I read it and, and probably don't read it religiously because most of the time it's just kind of routine stuff. Yep. I'll I'll be reading them now. Yeah. I bet there'll be a lot of people reading them now. Well, and um, you guys out there, there's some of you out there that dig through this with a fine tooth comb. I've known a one guy here in the Raleigh area that always went through it with a fine tooth comb mm-hmm. and, um, and would pick stuff out and, you know, whine and complain about it. And the rest of us just thought he was a crank. Um, well, don't think you're cranks anymore. <laughs> and, you know, maybe... Call it, Cause I'm, I'm fading out of this, you know, I know it doesn't look like it, but I'm fading out of this ham radio now thing. Call David, send yeah. an email. Let me know. And, uh, point this stuff out. You, we can't, we can't, uh, do that all ourselves. We need our, our, uh, investigative team. Right. So what should we call them? The H team? Arvin's army? Yeah. All, I like all, that. Arvin's there, army. There you go. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll go with that for now. Yeah. Arvin's army. It's, it's the, uh, it's the infield investigative team, but yeah, we can call him Arvin's army. Mike Lysenko sent email to all Hudson division director members. Mike is the director for the Hudson division. Mm-hmm. Um, regarding the Norton censure, I am not sworn to secrecy. My vote is in the public record. And that is true. They can, they can yep. tell you, can you how they you... voted. Yep. If, that information has been released, but if it is not, it was a voice vote, then they cannot tell you how they voted or how anyone else voted. Well, he, he, well, he could tell you. No, I'm supposed you're right. to. No. Yes, yeah, yeah, right. Yep. I will tell you that there were individual witnesses who attended the forum in Visalia who came to us with a different story than those released by Mr. Norton's supporters. Eleven board members agreed with those accounts. Three did not. I will not discuss the specific reasons enumerated as they are of a personnel nature. I think he means personnel. It wasn't spelled right. Mm-hmm. It was halfway between personal and personnel. Right. And uh, not appropriate for discussion, as any discussion of personnel issues is always inappropriate. Let's just say that I supported the majority decision. Mike, let's not just say that. Yeah. Let's say that there have been some serious questions raised and some very legitimate high profile people saying we were there and we didn't see what anybody's talking about. And this needs to come out. Let's yeah. not say, just say you supported the majority decision. Um, regarding why, why you should limit discussion after a vote. And I'm, I've, <clears throat> it was a long, a long letter and I'm, I'm making a long letter somewhat shorter. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then by commenting on it, making it long again. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what we do. Regarding limitations of discussions after the vote, you can't have decisions made and then have to deal with directors going off in a myriad of directions opposite to the collective decision by the board. It promotes confusion and ill will. Once a decision is made, we need to move forward and implement our decision. No. Yeah. No. 
Right. And just in case that didn't get through the first two times. No. Uh, Why well, have the code? Well, um, he repeated information about the code being enacted by uh, after the board. Um, and here's a short quote, had these obligations explained to them in detail by our Connecticut attorneys. And then his letter included several paragraphs about the need for team players and how the board members can discuss a policy with members as long as it's before a vote. And we've talked about that a lot. And I guess the only other thing is, um, no, I, I respect the idea that you got input from attorneys and it's not really my butt on the line. If we say, thank you, attorneys, we're not going to do it that way. But that, it sure is smacking of, um, I we know what else can we do? The attorneys told us to do this. Did you say to the attorneys, we can't talk about something after we voted on it to our members who elected us? Are you sure? Or did they just go, that sounds like a really good idea. I'm going to blame it on the attorneys. About the ARL becoming more corporate, you mentioned something I believe about it sounding like they were becoming big. Yeah, big when company. this start, when you know, when this when this started um, to come out to kind of roll out, and and I've been involved in, you know, I've worked corporate for years and years and years, and I've also have um, been part of membership organizations. This is less this corporate stuff that I read, and and again, code of conduct, great, but the way the code of conduct's worded, this whole. Um, gag order, because that's the way I look at this, this whole gag order thing, this whole, you know, once we de we decide we're going to do something, we're going to move it forward. This sounds like how a corporate board would be set up. The CEO wants to go in a direction and the board agrees and they're going to go that direction. This is not a membership. This does not look like the membership model where I've elected people, they're all going to go sit in a room and they're going to tough it out and fight it out. And if some of them agree, some of them don't, they need to work through it and work it out. And this is not just having, you know, the president have a group of guys green light what they're doing and be behind their direction. It doesn't, it doesn't, um, it doesn't seem membership oriented. Yeah. yeah I don't know. Corporate just, board just, threw Steve Jobs out of work. <clears throat> Turns out perhaps not such a good idea, but they did it. Yeah. Maybe not, maybe not <clears throat> such a good idea. Yeah. They don't have to be. All, no, it doesn't. All, absolutely, it doesn't yes, have to be. But they often yeah, are. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be. But but you know, you think when you're picking those people, you're not going to pick people that are going to push back all the time when you want to do things. Yeah. But but uh, this is not that. This is a membership organization, and right. we don't have them on the show tonight. We're going to have some lawyers. We 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 got some lawyers lined up. To Great. Be here. We'll hear for yep. some. Yay! We're going to hear from some more lawyers. Well, and the and the whole the whole you know you know, need, need for team players that, that just rubs me the wrong way. That's like, yeah, yeah we're not team great. players. <laughs> yeah, I'm surely not a team player and, and I surely don't want my director to be a team player. Yeah. I want my director to represent me and I want my director to be able to say what he thinks is right. And once they vote on it, if it's not the right thing, there's no reason why they need to like sit in the corner and be quiet about it. Yeah. I'm going to say that I can be a team player. Um, you need to convince me of the, the direction the team is going. Absolutely. Or you need to convince me that this is the direction the team is going and we appreciate that you disagree, but we would like you to, to go this direction anyway. And don't tell me to shut up. Right. Yep. Boy, don't tell me to shut up. Right. Not, not with the internet out here. Yeah. Not with Wirecast sitting in front of me. So you're not getting elected anytime soon, Gary. I don't think so. Nope. This is what Mike says. In my opinion, it has been the lack of management prior to the new administration that led us down a very uncomfortable path. Let me read that again. In my opinion, it has been a lack of management prior to the new administration that has led us down a very uncomfortable path. That may or may not be, I don't know. It, it, it's not something he was talking about a lot back when he was being a team player for the previous team. But what this sounds like to me is, there's the bus. There's Dave Sumner under the bus. Yeah, and and I, I, again, and maybe Kate Craigie. And we're you know we're and we're we're picking all these words apart, and um, but this whole let us down a very uncomfortable path. 
are things so messed up and screwed up there that they need to like redo this all? Don't know. Cause I don't, I don't get an impression. I'm not getting, I'm not getting reports. Um, I'm getting, you know, nice, you know, You have frozen, and I will look and see if uh, now my wirecast seems to be working. So let's see what happened with David. Another LA power failure, perhaps. I'm going to hang up there and try to call him back. If I get him on his phone. We'll know something blew up. I don't want to send a video message. Maybe they had one of those earthquakes. Well, we will try again. I'll try to keep an eye on on whether David is trying to call back. Because <clears throat> I don't let Wirecast ring in my ear or uh, Skype ring in my ear. Uh, let's see. CQ has got their uh, white paper out. Um, talked about that in a previous episode or three. Um, it's a long, complicated URL, but uh, I'll have it on the website. It's It's got sections from both the um, December and January editorials and a few more things. You, stuff that, that you kind of have seen before, but a good, good review. And it's um, it's got that spot I'm not sure exactly where it is, but uh, about the. Uh, so I was hoping my brain would get me to the end of that sentence as I was beginning it, and, the, and it didn't. <clears throat> Never get old. Try David one more time. He's back. Sorry, we we had a disturbance in the force here. Do you have a power failure? <sighs> no, we had our we had internet. You know, we have an intermittent internet failure problem. We've actually been pretty lucky for the last couple of months and haven't lost it during the show. But then we, you know, a lot of I have to go reboot the router and. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm still I'm still dealing with Spectrum on wanting to do. Uh, sorry, where was I? Oh yeah, I was just. I was just rambling on about, yeah. Well, I'd, I'd moved on to the uh, CQ's um, okay white paper, which uh -huh. we're not going to do much about, which note that it's there. Yeah. And, uh, okay, so now it's time to get to these guys here. That's the, uh, my ARL voice. Right. Before I say anything about them, other than that the, they're a group that, um, yeah, let's talk about who they are. Yeah, this I is think this, that's, I think that's really important. Yeah, this is the this is the they call it the steering committee. Um, and I'll read the names. I, I know some of these guys. I don't know most of them, but mm -hmm. some of you will will know and not know some of them. Rick Tavin, N six XI, Maxim Society and Legacy Circle member. Maxim Society and Legacy Circle are people that give a lot of money to the league. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at here in in him and, and others that we look at, these are not people that have just been chronic league complainers and bashers. Right. Supporters. Yep. Kip Edwards, uh, Esquire. There's a lawyer. Um, W6SZN, Maxim Society. Uh, Legacy Circle, past director. Jim Talons, N3JT has been on Ham Radio Now yep. once before. He was on the, uh, it ain't parody until we think it's parody. That's right. Rusty Epps, Esquire. Another lawyer, W6OAT, Legacy Circle. Fred Hopengarten, been on Ham Radio now a couple times. Um, he was on that. He another, was on that same one with um, Jim. Yep. Um, another lawyer, K1VR, Bob Famiglio, another lawyer, K3RF. Uh, Marty Vol, uh, Wol, Wall, N6VI. He's, yeah, he's uh, our your past, buddy. He's 
Yeah, he's our past uh, vice director here. Yep. John uh, Corvelli, W2GD, life member. Rick Gelber, K2WR, life member. Bob Wilson, N6TV, life member. Jim uh, Idelson, uh, K1VR. K1IR. A- K1IR and ARL member. And they are calling themselves the uh, steering committee, a group of passionate ARL members who have come together to help address the rising level of concern about the direction of the ARL. Um, so that is who they are. So um, here's more like what they are. We've got a countdown clock, 11 days, five hours, 43 minutes till the next board meeting. Trust in the ARL leadership is eroding. We need your help to protect the future of the ARL. More than 100 years, the American Radio Relay League was an organization we've trusted to openly serve its membership and advocate for amateur radio in the United States. Over the past two years, that has changed. Why now? There have been a range of troubling policy and governance actions taken by the league's leadership over the past two years, as well as actions planned to be formalized at the board meeting on January 19, 2018 in Newington. We are working hard to inform our fellow members across all segments of our community and to encourage them to convey their feelings on these issues to the ARL board and management. So you can find this at ARR, my ARL voice. One more time. My ARRL org, and take a look at it. <clears throat> I've kind of wondered if, if I have a, a grip on the main list of issues that um, are are beyond the code of conduct because the code of conduct is sort of a process thing and having the directors or having the the, the uh, officers be able to vote more process none of these were were ham radio issues that hams were unhappy with the way the board was handling so were were there any of those well, there are a few, but a lot of it is just we don't like the way they're setting the board up to kind of ease us members to the side. Right. Uh, one of the the big ham radio issues turns out to be the Parity Act, and right. something that we've talked to to uh, to people out uh, about before. And I don't know really where I fall on this one, but we certainly know that that there's a bunch of uh, of hams that don't think the parody act is um good for ham radio and they got to be smart enough to know that even if it may not be the best thing we can get it's the only thing we can get and they don't think that that's well first of all they say we would rather have nothing than the parody act that was kind of the the takeaway from the show that we did yeah when these we, guys. Well, yeah when we talked to these guys basically the the you know what i came away with was Either we let the HOAs write it or we just weren't paying attention based on what they included and what they allowed to go yeah. in there. And they had yeah. a few things, a few points that I couldn't argue with. And, but the, the, the general tone was, I kind of think that if we're going to get something through, this will help more hands than it hurts. And, um, and we'll, uh, you know, be good enough. And it's probably the best we can get. But they did have some specific things that they thought should be changed that I was going to, I kind of agreed with them. Yeah, there's at least a few little things to change. Little in terms of language, maybe fairly big in terms of significance. Well, that's, and that's, I think what I came away with, there was was one or two butts or ors. If you take the butts or ors out, I'm good with it. But otherwise, the butts or ors allowed them to say, you know, a, a reasonable accommodation is you can have a, you know, 18 inch steel whip for 70 centimeters and 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 that's enough and they can say that that's that was it and all and, and what have you yeah you're an it guy you're not an yeah. rf guy it's, it no. will be a 19 inch whip for two meters and a Sorry. six inch whip for 70 centimeters there you go thanks for thanks for fixing that for yeah me. no problem glad to help yeah uh the code of conduct directors voting so you know those are our process this is just representative issues. stuff yeah uh, yep. membership termination Vice directors eliminated uh, governance proposals um, have generated significant undisclosed legal fees. I got some points to make about that. We haven't talked about that at all. Yeah. Director censured candidate for the board of directors could be disqualified without 
explanation. So that's their list of big issues. One of the things that, that they did not list on there and is Groen's, um, you know, a, a fairly, fairly long gray beard is uh, the NTS stuff that we have not talked about very much. Um, mm. But a, a director, a, a, an NTS, oh, wow. But not sure what the position was. A guy that was in charge of NTS in the East someplace got booted out. Yeah. Um, it's this Cascadia rising thing. Yep. And I am absolutely not an expert on all this stuff. But as I understand it, a a ham who had a position in NTS went to FEMA to work on stuff directly. ARL knows this got out of joint because he bypassed headquarters. He sued. The league won the suit. Or maybe it was the other way around. In case the league the league won whatever lawsuit came up out of this. And now apparently there is some independent traffic handling group I don't know anything about, but we you will find out. Yeah, I'll work you, on that. You as I, I know David. I, I know I know kind of what's going on um with the new group and we'll invite them along as we move forward. Yep. Uh let me look at this um this section called Other Voices. Um so a lot of people have 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 uh made noise and this website has caught wind of some of the noise that is being made. Um yeah. They've got a list of uh, letters that have been sent by a bunch of different people. Then they list the CQ uh, editorials and the white paper. They list KB6NU's blog, and um, they list our show. Yeah, and they also list you know, radio clubs that have that have um, sent letters as well. Yeah, and so I, not just and individuals I'm, but groups. Right, and I'm um, I left that for last um, because uh, I, I think that maybe you know most significant. Uh, because these are not rogue, rabble-rousing organizations, although if they see an area that, that they have a strong concern, and they're, you know, they're contesting groups, that if, if they mm -hmm. see the league doing something that they don't think is in their favor, well, they will make a lot of noise about it and have mm -hmm. their members make a lot of noise about it. But yep. you can't call them troublemakers. You can't call them anti-league because most of the time they're in strong support. Right. And then they try to influence things. So these guys have... Uh, have weighed in. Uh, I think this is one Florida contest group um, making some recommendations about the the policies and the you know, governance. Um, and again, uh, I'm not going to spend the time to read all these directly, just to say who they are. And they're all going pretty much the same direction. But they've got it's not form letters that they're sending. The right. Northern California Contest Club sent a letter. And uh, the Potomac Valley Radio Club, which is a uh, contest group that kind of encompasses my territory. We're kind of the southern end of their, of their area of influence. And they sent one and uh, not listed here, but apparently sent to um, uh, to uh, uh, Jim Boner was something from CDXA, which is the next, next DX group to the south, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the Carolina DX Association. Uh, so, so they have weighed in. Uh, strongly, it would appear. Um, so this, uh, you know, I kind of, you know, when we were getting started with our first show, I was thinking, you know, we're just going to be a little pebble tossed in the brook and not going to really make a difference. And I could turn the volume up and try to shout a little louder, but that really wasn't going to do it very much. We were, our influence would be minimum. Well, maybe that's true, but now it is getting more and more widespread. And yep. the influence is going to be larger. And, you know, maybe the only concern here is that um, it's 11 days, five hours and 35 minutes until the board of directors meeting. I got a feeling this is going to take a lot of time at that meeting. Mm -hmm. love, love to be a fly on the wall. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> At least have a camera in the room, but I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think so. I don't think so. And 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 I'm also concerned and and expect that there won't be a lot of feedback out coming out of the room after it's all done. It'll just be a list of this is what we voted, and yay, that's what we're going to do for the things that they voted on. 
the yeah. directors will be able they to voted, say they can't the things tell us. that they voted for right well for things that they were voted on the only thing the directors can tell us is that that this is what they voted on this is what they decided and i agree yeah and we're in support i support it yeah and yeah. um if it was a voice vote i can't tell you how i voted right well i and i think no i haven't seen that someone somewhere in one of these letters actually several of the letters that um the ones that uh one of the ones i saw that went to one of the directors um calling for them to ask specifically for a not a written vote not a voice vote so that there is a record and that and would we'll be good where, yeah we'll see where that goes yeah. that would it would be nice um i you know i will send a note to my director asking for that um you know, hopefully you can send one to yours and one of them, someone will include that. Yeah. I think he's still looking at my email. Yeah. I think. Sorry. For Jim. now. Could could be watching. Jim? Yeah. Voice vote, please. Or a uh, written vote. No, not written, not voice vote. Okay. Written, written vote. vote. So, so there was one. I, I've been I've been bad about the the um, Facebook room, but there was one question that came up. We give you uh, one job. One job. Yeah. Actually, if we came up. When did it come through? Uh, Aaron. Aaron asked, um, "What is a director's job?" And that's a good question. It's enumerated in the um, articles of uh, articles of association, but there's a lot of them. It's going to take me a while to find it. There it is. Uh. Oh, that's voting. Election. Yeah, it's probably not going to say a director is. Right. Um, I, it's just that they exist and they vote. Right. So, so there, so, you know, here, let's summarize it and, and tell me how wrong I get it. Right. I, I'm voting for a director to represent me in my area for my uh, amateur radio needs and concerns and to represent me in our you know, lobbying organization, because essentially that's what the ARL is, right? Um, to, you know, help support amateur radio in the community and in the nation. There's probably other stuff that they do as well. Um, but, you know, they're, the, the director's like my senator. I mean, if you want to, if you want to, like, boil it down to, to, you know, very simple um you know, ideas there, there is my, you know, voted representative to, um, to help share my voice and the voice of, uh, everybody else in their area. Yeah. I don't know. What else do you think I, they do? Well, I looked through it and I didn't, uh, I didn't catch it. Although I'm not really good at, uh, scanning these things as yeah, I'm trying I've, to do I've a been show. Watching. I, did, I didn't really see it either. So, um, what else do you think that they do, Gary? Well, I mean, they they propose what the league should do. They uh, they vote on it. They elect yeah. the uh, vice president and the president. President. I think they uh, have something to do with um, who is going to be the uh, CEO and maybe a couple of the other officers. Right. They probably they probably um, man and make up the committees. Yeah. And the different the different sub organizations, you know, the different groups to support. Um, the different directions that the that the ARLs go in. Each director shall keep himself. This is from the bylaws. Shall keep himself informed as to conditions and activities in their territorial division, and as to the needs and desires of the members therein, in order that he may faithfully and intelligently represent the true interests of such members. He shall attend all meetings, <clears throat> all meetings of the board. At least fourteen days prior to the annual meeting of the board of directors, each director is encouraged to file. With the secretary, a written report on the status of affairs of the league in his division, together with a statement of his recommendations as to any actions required for the effective administration of the of the objectives and affairs of the league. So I guess, I don't know, is that it? That's kind of it. There's, there's more things that they can be part of, but that's, that's the basic part. So... Yeah, a whole lot more about how you get to be one than right. what you do once you are one. Yeah. 
So you can see these things, um, ARL.org uh, slash ARRL dash BY dash LAWS for the bylaws and uh, ARL dash articles dash of dot dash association for the uh, articles of association. It, it turns out if you ask for the articles of incorporation, you're going to get something about the ARL foundation, which is a thing that they run, but it's not what, what governs the, uh, the league itself. It governs the foundation, which is, uh, you know, money in and out, I think mm -hmm. primarily, I think. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at the horse lion over there. I believe he's dead. Yeah. Whip marks all over that carcass. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully you didn't lose any friends tonight. And I think we need to keep talking about this. Not tonight though. No, but uh, hopefully one more time uh, with yeah. the uh, lawyers. Okay. Before, oh. uh, I'm before down. the board meeting, we will yep. see. And, and we'll keep following, you know, the, the, We'll see what pops up. I think it was came live Saturday, Friday night, Saturday, a couple days ago. Yeah. When, so it, we'll when it initially popped up, they did not have that list of uh, uh, what did they call them? The, the other voices? No. The um, oh, the issues. The steering committee. There we go. Oh, got the it, steering got it. committee. And I, yeah. I pointed that out to uh, one of the guys that had pointed had pointed me to the site. And they said, oh, my God, <laughs> let's get that up there. We're not hiding. Right. I said, it doesn't look good to have something up there that was totally anonymous. And they said, that's not, no. Well, then there it was. There's all the names. Yeah. You want to read this here title that's sitting on the screen? Yes, I do. It's, <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you like what we're doing and uh, what you want to support us, uh, please visit hamradionow.tv and look for Arvin, click the pig, and um, send us some money. Okay. And now this one. And I'm David Goldenberg, W0DHG, your co-host. And I am desperately trying to get my title up. Gary Pierce, scan 4 aq your currently producer, editor, host, soon to hand all that over to the poor schlub sitting to my screen over here screen Me and I'm lifting to the listing to my right but I believe that will be to the screen left yeah stage stage left stage right I always mess those things up yeah I wish I were a television professional yeah and um, I have I have something clever to say once once all that is done and we do our close or and for then, the best part of the show? And then, and, and then we'll see what happens after that. <laughs> okay. Over. And out. And so the clever thing is, burn it down! I don't know if I want to go there. <laughs> I, 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 I believe that that, that is counterproductive. You way. folks out there, when you tell people to watch this episode because of the great content, Tell them it's it was like ninety minutes long, not two and a half hours. You don't watch the whole thing. They're gonna see the they're gonna see the the timeline and say two and a half hours. Well, you know, maybe maybe the thing we should start now. We shouldn't do that. We should say we should start cutting off part of it. Like we'll leave it on Facebook, but the stuff we post on the show on the um, on YouTube on YouTube and we the should, audio. Or, yeah, we cut the good stuff. I could do that. I have the power. <laughs>